What's up everyone? John Renter from Techno and Buffalo here with a full review for you of the HTC First, the very first phone to ship with Facebook Home right out of the box. This phone packs a lot of punch for a $99 price. Let's go ahead and give it a full review, see if it's worth your phone buying buck. Let's go ahead and get started. As part of our pledge to our audience, we always disclose how long we used the phone before our review was filmed or written. So we used this guy for a little over four and a half days. Um, so one point that I want to drive home throughout the course of this review is this is a $99 phone. Uh, so to compare it spec-wise with flagships, the HTC One or the Galaxy S4 um, aren't quite fair. So look at this from the mindset uh, of just under a $100 phone. Um, so let me go ahead and run through the specs very quickly and then we'll talk about the phone itself just to refresh you in case you forgot what the HTC First is packing. So it's got a 4.3 inch 720p, so that's 1280 by 720, with a PPI of 342. Uh, again, that's a 720p screen. Android 4.1 at launch, but fingers crossed 4.2 will be coming. Powering it is a 1.4 gigahertz Qualcomm dual core chip. That is the 89300AA, in case you're keeping track at home. Giga RAM, 16 gigs of storage. There is non-removable here, so you're stuck with 16. Um, you're going to have a 5 megapixel shooter. Lives right there on the back, LED flash. The front camera has a 1.6 megapixel shooter. It's got 80211 A, B, G, and N Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. It does have NFC, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and charges the way every other phone charges nowadays via micro USB. All right, so we went through the specs. Let's talk a little bit more about this guy. So this is the first phone to ship right out of the box with Facebook Home. Now you can download Facebook Home on other devices and get a Facebook Home experience, but this was sort of the reference phone uh, for how it was going to work. Um, Facebook has claimed that they are going to update this on a monthly basis, so this might uh, change as the phone gets new features. Uh, so we broke up this review in essentially two parts. There's a whole separate review on Facebook Home, so if you want to take a look at that, hit the link down below, or if you want to hit it, they'll put an annotation right above it as well. All right, so let's talk about how this guy first and foremost works as a phone, uh, and it works pretty well. So we tested it with AT&T's 4G LTE network, and it oftentimes backfilled to HSPA+, and it worked great. We didn't have any drop calls. It used to be something that I was, you know, would make a point of. It's coming more and more common with all the phones we test. No drop call issues at all. Antenna was relatively strong. We held it next to the HTC One and we were able to test how many bars of LTE or HSPA Plus we had. And it was almost the same uh, across the board. So no issue there at all uh, with the antenna strength. The speaker though, kind of stinks. Uh, it's certainly not the best. If you're listening to a phone call, uh, you're using speakerphone, it's gonna sound a little bit tinny. Music and games don't sound very good on it as well. So as I mentioned, Facebook Home was done in a full review. So if you wanted to get a walkthrough of how it works, how it integrates, hit the link down below. The moral though, uh, that it makes doing anything non-Facebook related a giant pain. I will say though, the UI is absolutely beautiful. Facebook engineers did a really nice job with how they made Facebook Home look. But again, if you want to do something that's not Facebook centric, it takes a few extra steps. Uh, so we gave Facebook Home uh, a five out of 10. Um, but there's much more than Facebook Home to the HTC First, which is why we broke that up into two separate reviews. Uh, so build quality here is now typical HTC, which is about as big a compliment as I could give a phone. Uh, it's absolutely outstanding. I really like the way the phone feels here uh, in my hand. It almost feels like a spiritual successor to the HTC One S, you know, although certainly uh, it's not. The soft touch back feels great, although certainly if you got a little bit of sweat on your hands, uh, you are going to see it. Uh, it feels a little softer to the touch than it did on, say, the Droid DNA. Facebook learns from phone to phone. Uh, so this is a really nice job. The build quality is absolutely outstanding. Uh, volume buttons are easy to press, and the phone feels really solid in your hands, which is not something that I could say uh, for pretty much every a $99 phone out there. Uh, the phone is also pretty zippy too. It's being powered by a you know, dual core chip, which has plenty uh, of power. But when I was playing games or watching videos, doing normal phone stuff, no issues with slowdown at all. And I know you guys are gonna wanna know the quadrant score on this was 5,048, which put it close to on par uh, score-wise with the HTC One X. So in case you're keeping track at home, 
Uh, it's again pretty decent score. It's not the most technical way to evaluate a phone, but it's a score that we use for every Android phone we test. Uh, and again, bear in mind, this is not a flagship phone. Uh, this phone though does have a pretty awesome secret. Uh, pure unadulterated Android can be installed with just a few taps. It's actually pretty easy. Um, so if you want to get some pure Android experience, tap the screen, drag your little icon, go on up to apps, depending what app screen you're in, if you're in this one with your shortcuts, or if you want to scroll on over to the left, uh, you will see Facebook home settings. You can also access it via the menu button and you can turn off Facebook home. We'll go ahead and turn that sucker right off. And we have now pure unadulterated Android. So we'll select the launcher, we'll use that just once. And now we've got unaltered Android 4.1. This is where the phone for me gets really, really interesting. For 99 bucks, you get a Nexus-esque experience. Uh, not quite full Nexi, because it's not running 4.2 and it won't get updates as quickly uh, as a traditional Nexus device, but it does have LTE, which the Nexus 4 does not. So if that's important to you, this might be a pretty solid choice to consider. Uh, the camera quality here was pretty average, nothing great. Certainly you're not going to be Ansel Adams with the camera on here, but average low light performance. Pictures looked fine if you want to upload them to Facebook or put them on Instagram. Uh, this camera is going to serve you just fine. Um, so you get pure Android as you would on any other Android phone, but you can also have chat heads that can run um, on you know, in your native Android experience or inside any of the application, you could turn that off too if you want. But chat adds one of my favorite features of Facebook Home. So I like being able to merge the two worlds. Uh, so this phone really does offer something interesting. There were times when I liked having Facebook Home on. If I was waiting for my wife, I could just scroll through pictures. Uh, but if I wanted to really use the phone to do anything else, I like the fact that I could turn it right off very easily. Uh, so I think Facebook and HTC did a really nice job with that actually. Uh, so I'd have liked the phone to have had a movable storage and a movable battery. Uh, for me, the movable battery isn't that big a deal. I carry external battery chargers, but I know for some of you that is definitely a deal breaker. Uh, locking into 16 gigs of storage, again, would have liked to have had the option to pop in an SD card. So that is definitely not here. So if you need a phone that's going to have removable battery or going to have ex uh, removable storage, know that going in. So know that if you need you know, eight batteries to carry with you, this is not the phone to choose. Um, but if you can live with the limitations, you're going to have a great option. Um, of phone choices here. Battery life in that 2000 milliamp hour battery is actually pretty good. Uh, with typical phone usage, which for me, uh, takes the phone off the charge around seven o'clock, about an hour and a half to two hours of phone calls, usually connected to Wi-Fi, uh, either at home or the office. Some text messaging, some social media, media stuff, some picture uploading, uh, browsing some videos and some light games. I was able to get home and put it on the charger around 11 o'clock to midnight with well over 40% of battery life. So this was a very strong performer. The phone's getting a lot of negative press. I don't think it's justified. If this phone was sold spec-wise as a pure Android experience with no Facebook home on it, I think people would be all over it. And the fact you can have the option to turn that on or off, uh, this phone should be really one you should look at. I really enjoyed using it and I think Facebook Home and if Facebook delivers monthly updates, uh, this could be a pretty nice option to have. So the final score, this phone gets a very solid 7.5. It brings a lot to the table. I like the fact that I had Facebook Home. I like the fact that I could turn it off. If I had no option to turn Facebook Home off, this would have been a very different score. Uh, but everything this phone set out to do to bring Facebook right to your home screen it definitely succeeded with that. Uh, but that experience might not be for everybody. So HTC really has a nice surprise giving you that unadulterated Android experience. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you agree, disagree? For 99 bucks, I think you're getting a lot for your money. Please give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. I am John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.